Hi, everybody. My name is Alicia Lofthouse, and this is Free at Last Ministries, and I'm so sorry for being late. My phone said that there was no internet, and I knew without internet I wasn't going to be able to preach anyway, so um, before we get started, I'm sorry, I've been running back and forth, so whew, let me breathe. Thank you, God. Okay, I got my anointing oil, and uh, we're going to pray before we get started. This is a good message uh, about being in the valley, but still hanging on to God. It's called, God is nothing but good. Nothing but good. So, if there's anybody out there going through a valley, going through a hard time, and you're wondering, why me? Why me, Lord? What have I done? What was my crime? You know, what did I do that I have to be going through this? Through sickness, through, like we always pray, spiritual, physical, and financial problems, you know? Why am I going through a divorce? Why are my children the bad ones? Why is, is all this going on around me? Well, sometimes it's not about what you did. It's about what God allows. Okay? So let's just go ahead and pray for God to speak through me and that this message will be as good as it was when I started. When I studied, I'm sorry. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you today, Lord God, with praise and thanksgiving as always. Lord God, I'm asking you, Lord God, to move. Move in this house today, Lord God, and move in this house here, the house that stands, that preaches for you, God, that speaks for you, Father. Oh, God, I'm asking that you touch everybody out there, Lord God, that's going through something right now. Lord, whether it's physical, spiritual, or financial, Lord, whether it's in the marriage, whether it's in the home, whether it's at work, wherever it is, Lord God, I'm asking you to help us, Lord. Help us to see, Lord God, God, that you never leave us, you never forsake us, God, that no matter what, God, you're right there with us. Open up our spiritual eyes to see you, Lord. Open our spiritual eyes that we might see you. Open our spiritual ears that we might hear you. Oh, God, oh, God, but whatever we do, don't let us walk walk away from you, God. Don't let us listen to the enemy. Don't let us listen to the devil, God, but let us hang on to you, Lord God, no matter what. You're a good, good God, and you ain't nothing but good, Father, and I love you and thank you and praise you for all things I give you thanks in Jesus' name. Touch this message, Lord. Speak through me, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen. Before we get started, I want to sing a song. It's one of my new songs on my new CD, but, uh, all these songs were given to me because of what I went through. You know, this is about being in the valley. And I just want to sing it to you, okay? It goes with the message. Oh, had to get me a new DVD player. And I need to learn how to fix it. God, please help my voice, Lord. Please help my voice. Let me get you corner. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. The sun is high and I'm so lonely. I feel I'm walking in a maze. You promised you would never. Like I said, it's brand new. Please help me. I'll make it through. Ooh, how do you work this thing, Lord? Try it one more time. There you go. It seems I'm walking in a valley With blinded eyes that cannot see A little pool of clear, clean water To take this thirsty quench from me The sun is hot and I'm so lonely I feel I'm walking in a maze. I call upon my precious Jesus, but I haven't heard from him in days. Oh, 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 oh. Lord, where are you now? You promised you would never leave me. I'll make it through this trial somehow. If this is where you want me to be, I can't believe how my heart's breaking. It feels as though he's gone away. But 
I'll tell you what I'll do Until I hear from you In this valley I will stay I will never walk away from you I left my past far behind There's a mountain up ahead But it just seems so hard to find But I'm gonna keep on walking Though the trail is hot and long Because when I see your face I feel amazing grace All my trials will be gone Lord, where are you now? You promised you would never leave me I'll make it through this trial somehow If this is where you want me to be I can't believe how my heart's breaking It feels as though you've gone away But I'll tell you what I do Until I hear from you In this valley I will stay but I'll tell you what I do Until I hear from you In this valley I will stay I will stay Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, what a good, good God. Good, good God that allows us to... I mean, I'm, I'm thankful. I'm very thankful that every emotion I went through, whether it was joyful, sadness, you know, like loneliness and everything, I just wrote. I wrote my feelings down. And because I did that, I made it into poems or, or music that help other people who are going through the same thing that I was going through. But anyways, I'm going to jump into the uh, scriptures. I'm going to use my big King James Version today. It sounds prettier in this. But anyways, we're going to Psalms 107. And I love, I love, I love this, this message. Okay. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. And gathered them out of the lands from the east and the south, the west and the north. Woo! Amen. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I'm saying so, Lord. Thank you for redeeming my soul. Thank you, God. They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. They were miserable. They couldn't go nowhere. I mean, no matter where they went, they were just unhappy. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of all their distresses. And he led them forth by the right way, that they might go to a city of habitation, that they might go somewhere where there's life, where there's people, there's joy and peace. All oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness, and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he satisfieth the longing soul and filleth the hungry soul with goodness. Woo, that's my kind of God. Such as sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, being bound in affliction and iron, because they rebelled against the words of God and contemned the counsel of the Most High. I said, Lord, what does that word mean, contend? So I looked it up. It means to despise, to consider and treat as mean and despicable, to scorn, to slight, to neglect as unworthy of regard, to reject with disdain. They're talking about the word of God. They didn't want to hear nothing from God. They didn't want to read nothing from God. They just didn't want to be there. That's why they were miserable and hungry and thirsty because they were, they were in the wilderness. They were in the wilderness with nothing, nothing. Everything made them miserable. Yet each time God comes and delivers them out when they cry out for him. And then it says, um, 
Therefore, he brought down their heart with labor. They fell down and there was none to help them because they rebelled against the word of God. They didn't want to live, you know, a godly life. They didn't want to go to church. They didn't want to pray. And they definitely didn't want to listen to the word of God. So God says that, that he brought down their heart with labor. They fell down. There was none to help. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of all their distresses. What a loving God we got. He ain't nothing but good, I'm telling you. Nothing but good. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death and break their bonds in sunder. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Woo! This is where I'm going to preach from. For he had broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. We put ourselves in that predicament, situation, whatever you want to call it. We put ourselves there. Excuse me. You know, a lot of times... People, uh, yes, they rebel against God, but there are some people that don't rebel against God. There's Christians out there wondering why, you know, why is this happening to me? Why am I coming underneath this cloud? Why am I in the wilderness? What did I do, Lord? I'm living my life right. I'm paying my tithes, the 10% of all that you earn. I'm paying that. I'm doing everything that I know to do from your word of God, Lord. But what's going on? Let's read from Job, Job 1. I love that. Oh, I took my marker. Okay. How many know that the enemy is coming against our soul? How many know that Satan's on the prowl and he's looking for you to deceive you, to destruct you, to bring you to nothing, to take you to hell with him by deceiving you? It says, now, now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. Remember I told you in Matthew 18, 10, it says that beware how you treat my children. He's talking about the little ones and the big ones. Anyone that's a child of God, you beware how you treat them. He said, because their angels, T-H-E-I-R, their angels do forever behold the face of my father, which is in heaven. Do you know that? You got a guardian angel. God sends ministering angels. The Bible says he sends angels unaware. You entertain angels unaware. You don't even know you're doing it. Watch how you treat people. Watch how you treat Christians. Watch how you treat the pastor, the preachers. Oh my goodness, be careful of what you do. You know not what you do. Okay, so Satan comes on the day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan, and Satan came also. Okay. Uh, the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Where are you coming from, Satan? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro on the earth, from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said to Satan, Now listen. The Lord said to Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in all the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and chases away evil. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for nothing? Hast thou not made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand. Well, wait. So it says that God put a hedge about him. You know, when the Bible where I was reading in Psalms where it says that God takes that, that hedge. It's an iron hedge, a, a brass, an iron. Satan's got you. He's got you like a... Did I write that down? Yes. Satan has bars all around you. He owns you. He won't let nothing good get near you. You hear that? 
You think you're living for God, but maybe you're not. And maybe you are, maybe you're going through troubles and trials. But a valley is a testing place. You know, to test your heart. Are you strong? Are you weak? Are you going to give in right away? God told Satan, uh, do what you want. It says, but, but, he says, uh, thou hast blessed the work, okay, and it says, but put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, he didn't think about it. He didn't think, well, wait a minute. Do I think Job will give in? Do I think Job will back down and say, God, I can't do this. I can't do this. I, I don't want you anymore. This is what I have to get for serving you. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he has is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth in the presence of the Lord. Well, Satan destroyed everything. He took his ten children, killed them in a house in one day. The same day, he took all of his cattle and the sheep. Everything was destroyed. Only one servant from each place came to tell Job, Job, this has happened. You have nothing left. Job, this has happened. Master, there's nothing left. The last one, Job, your children were in a house eating and drinking, and there came a strong wind, and Break the house down into pieces. And there is none left. All your kids are gone. They're dead. Only I escaped to tell you. You've got nothing. Nothing left. And Job just, he just cried out and he said, Then Job arose and rent his mantle. He tore his clothes. He shaved his head. And he fell down upon the ground and he worshipped. You hear that? He worshipped God in the midst of his troubles and trials. He worshipped his sufferings. Oh my goodness. Can you imagine all that happening to you in one day? Woo, one thing upon another. And yet he got down on his knees and he worshipped. And he said, naked came I out of my mother's womb. And naked shall I return. The Lord gave and the Lord had taken away. Blessed be the name of my Lord. Woo! In all this, Job sinned not. Nor did he charge God foolishly. He didn't blame God. You know, I have a lot of people that tell me that somebody got killed. And, you know, why didn't God stop it? Why don't God stop this? And why don't God stop that? God, because it's sin, because it's you, it's because it's the world. There's a drunk driver coming straight to a woman who's pregnant and a family in the back. But yet they all die and the drunk driver lives. Why? Who Are, are everybody in the family going to blame God for this? God didn't do it. The drunk driver did. But the drunk driver was drunk and it could be you. You know, there's so many people in prison that said, I don't even remember doing it. I don't even remember doing it. No sin that they commit. They don't remember it because they were either doped up, uh, psychologically crazy, uh, drunk, you know, anything. But they're in prison paying for what they did. In prison, they could still be free if they come to the Lord and ask for forgiveness. You know, we all have our troubles and trials. I had questions too when my mom died, but I didn't leave the church. I didn't, you know, I didn't run from the church and I didn't stop praying and I didn't stop reading the Bible. Of course I questioned God. That song, uh, Even If by Mercy Me came out and I stayed in my uh, church, um, what do you call that? The parking lot in front of the church. And it was nighttime and it was cold. She died December 9th and it was freezing outside. But I just played that song over and over. Even if you could take this, God, you can change it. You can wake my mother up from the grave. You can do this, God. But even if, even if you don't, you're still my God. You're still my God. You know, we can walk away from God. But like I preached last Sunday, he has you in the in 
the palms of his hand closed so nothing can get to you. No evil can come against you. But once you start that grumbling, complaining, talking about your neighbors, talking about gossiping and doing everything that you can to complain, then God's going to go like this. I can't be a part of that. I'm holy. I have angels who bow down to me. I have angels who sing around my throne continually, eternally. I won't have a part of that. I'm not going to have a part of your lies and your drinking and your drugs and all that. I'll stay here. I'm here whenever you need me. I promised I'd never leave you. I'd never forsake you. But I can't be there with you. You're out of my protection. You know? But once you get on those knees and you cry out to God and say, even if, even if, I know I'm in this valley. I know, I know I'm in the trial. I know my kids were killed. I know this was taken from me. I know I'm in the valley. But God, even if, I still will serve you. I'll still give you all my heart. I'll still go to church. I'll still read my Bible. I'll still pay my tithes. And God will bless you. I'm not going to take all day and read all of Job. But we'll go to the end of it. Now, I wanted to say that all the kids died, but God left them with a wife. <laughs> and the wife came up to him. I mean, God even, Satan put boils on him. I mean, he said, don't take his life. But he cursed his body and he, he put all these boils on him that Job had to take a, a hard piece of wood or something and scrape the boils off of his body. His body, not just his arms, but his face, his body. I mean, every place on his body was covered in boils. He didn't curse God. But his wife came up to him and said, why don't you just curse God and die? You know, she was angry about that because he was still worshiping God when everything was taken away from them. She didn't have her social life anymore. You know, he had everything. I mean, Job was the richest man in town. He had 10 kids. You know, he had blessing beyond blessing beyond blessing. People came to him for wisdom and stuff. But this woman didn't have her social life anymore. She didn't have her children. She didn't have nothing. Everything was taken away. And she said, why don't you just curse your God and die? She was wanting him to die because she hurt so bad inside of her. You ever hurt that bad? You hurt so bad that you wish the person that hurt you would die. You know? Just die. Look what you did to me. Look what you did to my family. Look what you did to my life. Just die. There's a lot of people out there like that. And you don't have to be. So anyways, um, then not only that, his three best friends, they come to torment him. They didn't come to encourage him. They came to accuse him. Now, Job, you know you must have did something wrong in order for all this to happen to you. What'd you do? Did you rape one of those daughters? Did you do something wrong? Did you go in the back and drink a little wine? Did you uh, take a little bit too much of this or too much of that? They just kept on telling him. It's a long thing, but it's good because that's the way people accuse us. You know, when, when we're hurting, you think Satan's going to stop just because something happened to you? No. Now that he sees your sorrow, he's going to dig his heels in deep. He'll call out the demons under his control and say, torment her, torment him. And I mean, don't you stop. Don't you give in until they're dead and they, they're mine. And I drag them to hell with me. And that's what he does. He reminds you of all that misery, all the troubles and the trials. That's why you're supposed to pray for your mind, you know, God, cast down every imagination. Oh, God, bring my mind under submission. Bring my mind unto you. You know, if you can't do that, get the Bible and just open it up and start reading. It's God's word. You know, God will comfort you through his word. Anyways, so the three friends come and they torment them and they keep telling them, but Job never once sins. I think he questioned God in there, but um, it was at the end. Let me find it. Okay. Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou canst, 
I know that you can do everything and that no thought can be withholding from you. You know, no matter what you're thinking, don't think that nobody hears you because God hears every thought and every intent of the heart. Every intention in your heart that you're going to do before you even do it, God knows. Job says, I know that you can do everything and that no thought can be withholden from you. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understood not things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. We don't know why these things are happening. We don't know. Is it God allowing it to happen or is it Satan coming against us and God is waiting for you to call on his name? You read Psalms, uh, well, I read it to you, Psalms 107, when they cried out in their distress, they walked away from God. They didn't want to hear the word. They didn't want to go to church. They didn't want to go back to that church. They didn't like the people that heard them. No. They'd rather live out there. They think they're not sinning. You think you're not sinning because you're not doing anything wrong. You're doing wrong by not forgiving those who have hurt you. You know, you're, that's why you're in torment and despair and things ain't going your way. And, and that's why he said, let me find it. I took my little thing out. It's a good message. Just please be patient with me, okay? I just want you to hear it. I'm going to go back to Job in just a second. Okay, it says, uh, They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. Uh, they were hungry and thirsty. Their soul fainted inside of them. There was no joy. There was no peace. There was nothing. But then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of all their distresses. Well, over here, uh, Job said that those things that were happening to him were way too many for his, you know, he couldn't comprehend. He couldn't comprehend God. God was asking about, did you, did you tell the, uh, the ocean that it could only come this far? Did you tell the sun to hide from the moon? Did you tell this to go that distance or that distance? Did you do it? Did you do it, Job? Did you do it who's listening? Do you control the earth's atmosphere, the stars? Did you name every one of the stars? The Bible says he knows every one of them by name. He knows every one of us by name. But all those things that he asked Job, did you? Did you do that, Job? And Job says, you know, no, he, he, it was too much for him. He didn't understand why he was going through that trial. He didn't understand why his friends came or why his wife cursed him. He didn't understand. But he knew one thing. He was not going to give up on the good, good God that blessed him for all those years. Okay, and then it says, uh, and the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he, oh, uh, what well, it says that, uh, God, that God went to his friends and told his friends, you go and you let Job pray for you because he did nothing wrong. Said, you let him pray for you or I'll come on you like I did Job. Better watch what you're saying about somebody. The Bible says that uh, uh, judge not lest you be judged by the same thing that you judge others. Watch out. Be careful. Don't hurt one of my little ones. That's God saying that. Don't you hurt one of my little ones. Don't you hurt the children. Don't you sit there and beat on your babies and cuss them out and call them all kinds of names. Shame on you. Okay, so the this three friends came. And it says, And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. See, God couldn't bless Job. Not until he forgave his friends for all that they accused him for. They accused him that he was doing something wrong. That's why he was being cursed. And the Bible says that Job had to forgive them and go and pray for them. Uh-huh. And the captivity of Job, he turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. 
Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Woo! Hallelujah, hallelujah. See how simple? Look, just say, I'm sorry. I forgive you and mean it with all your heart. God knows whether you're just saying it because you know that it's the Bible says to, you know, but when you forgive somebody, oh my goodness, God sets you free from that. I hated my pastor. I didn't know why. I'm talking about when back in 1983, 87, one of those times that I got saved. But I let everybody know how I didn't love her. You know why? Because she was married and white. She had, uh, you know, she had her mother was the pastor. I mean, everything good that I knew about her, she, I just hated it. I hated it because I knew I would never be that. I was a drug addict, a junkie. No good. I never, I don't even have an education. I don't have nothing. And I envied her. I hated her for the good that she had. Yeah. You know, sometimes we hate people for the good that they have. We're jealous. We um, desire that life. And so we hate them because we don't. So I just, you know, one night in a prayer meeting, uh, the uh, her mama, Sister Vera Franklin, was going around asking everybody to give a testimony. And when she got to this person, uh, she passed right over me. And she was, uh, did my mother and everybody else. Well, I've been smoking, so I thought maybe that's why I got passed on. So I told God, if you love me, if you want me to quit smoking, you tell Sister Judy, come and pray for me. Woo! We don't tell God what to do. Are you kidding me? i never been saved before. I guess it was back in 83. i never been saved before, so I didn't know nothing about the Bible. Uh, so anyways... They were testifying, testifying. I'm like, I was breaking inside. I was crying. And I said, God, please, if you want me to quit smoking, go tell Sister Judy to, to pray for me. And I heard him and he said, someone's trying to call. He said, go wash your feet. And I turned behind me because it was so audible that I thought someone was in the back. And you know what? The whole pew in back of me was uh, empty. And so then I asked the second time, go, tell her to come and pray for me. And again, he said, go wash your feet. He didn't say it in a mean way. He didn't say, go do it, go do it. He said, go wash your feet. So I, I just, you know, I couldn't believe that was God. You know, I didn't know God would speak to me. So um, then the third time I was just really crying. And I said, God, please, please, God, if you want me to quit smoking, you know, God wants you to quit smoking. You know God wants you to quit doing drugs, quit sleeping around, fornication, stop it, stop it, stop homosexuality, stop all that nasty stuff you're doing, get away from all that stuff, quit touching your little sister, quit touching your next door neighbor, you nasty little thing, you stop it, you ask God to forgive you, and God will forgive you and everybody will love you, well, in a while, but anyways, um, I don't know where that rabbit trail came, as my pastor said. Okay, so then the third time he said it, go wash your feet. I didn't know nothing about the church. I didn't know where anything was, but I knew it was in the back. So I'm crying and crying. I don't have no Kleenexes. I don't have nothing. It's just slobbering and my nose. You know how I got to use my Kleenexes. So I go to the back, and this woman that doesn't know, Sister Stella, doesn't know what I'm going in there for, she stands back and holds the door open, which, thank you, God, because I didn't know where the light was. So that was just God. God was leading me and guiding me. And uh, so anyways, uh, I saw where the cabinets were. And I went back there and I looked in every cabinet. No bowl, no pan to wash her, her, her feet. And uh, so I, I told God, if I don't find a bowl, I know it's not you. So then I, I got down to the last uh, opening little Oh, I'm so nervous. Closet like thing down there. Cabinet. Thank you, God. And uh, so I said, Lord, if there's not one here, I'm just going to, it wasn't you. So when I open it up, the only thing that's in there is a crisper. You know, one of those long Tupperware things. And I said, well, I can't wash your feet in that. And God spoke and he said, you can wash one foot at a time. <laughs> Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So I got that water as warm as I could. I mean, just to where her feet would be warm and comfortable. 
And uh, I got it and I filled it up and I found a little towel right there. Huh. That was God preparing all that for me. I never washed nobody's feet. I just knew that they said uh, it's a humble way. And I guess God gave me the wisdom. So anyways, I went in there and uh, I knew exactly where she was sitting. She, she sits on the pew out here because she gets up to go and help them sing and everything. So anyways, uh, I went over there and I got, to, well, everybody's looking at me. I mean, it got quiet because everybody knew I didn't like Sister Judy. And they thought I was going to go and pour that water. They didn't know what I was going to do. So anyways, Stella is still holding the door open. I, I would have had no way to open it because my hands were filled. And I was still snotting and everything. I couldn't wipe my nose or nothing. So I just went to her in a humble mode. And I said, Sister Judy, can I please wash your feet? And she looked up at me, you know. She probably didn't know what I was going to do. But she said, yes, sister. And I got down on my knees. And I, I put that down, took her shoe off. And I just picked her foot up as gentle as I could and put it in the water. And as soon as I did, I heard God say, now she'll pray for you. And she laid her hand on me and started praying for me. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. She started praying for me. And I'm telling you, those chains broke off. Those chains, those bars, those iron bars that they're speaking of, they broke off of me. God cut Satan loose. Leave her alone. She's mine now. Woo, I got chills all over my Hallelujah, hallelujah. But anyways, I had to go to work. So after I washed her feet, we hugged. And uh, I went to clean up the mess. And then I went and whispered to my mom. And I said, Mom, I got to go to work. And she said, okay, baby. And she was so proud of me. Okay, baby. And um, so I walked out of there a different woman, a new woman. And when I walked out, I got in my van and I realized I had a pack of cigarettes down there. I thought, well, I'll throw them out, you know, down the road or something. And God convicted me. He said, you throw them out now. So, he, no, he said, go lay them on the altar. So I thought, what? What? So I, I took my cigarettes in there. I always sprayed my hair with hairspray, brushed my teeth, put a little perfume. Nobody even knew I was smoking. And so I went and I walked in there with them hidden. And I just laid them on the altar. And there was all kinds of movement going on. I didn't even know what it was. But I walked out and I went back out and boy, I felt so free. Woo! I felt so free. And then, uh, so I left and the next day my mom told me that because of my obedience, you know, for asking for forgiveness and everything, for what I've done to her, how I treated her and everything, uh, God broke loose. And I mean, everybody started going. I said, where'd they find the bowls? But everybody was going and washing someone else's feet. That's what breaks loose. That's what brings victory and freedom and oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Are you wrapped in chains? Do you hate somebody? Do you Are you miserable? Are you just constantly crying? Why me? Why me? Oh my goodness. Just, just love on God. Let God love on you. Get on your knees. Ask God to forgive you. Ask God to give you wisdom. Oh God, the Bible says if you lack wisdom, ask. And he'll give it to you liberally. But anyways, I love you guys. I started a little bit late, but I see I'm, I'm getting on up there. But I love you and God loves you. There's nobody like Jesus. Woo! God is nothing but good. Nothing but good. So you run to Jesus, okay? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for this message, Lord. I thank you so much for those that have joined me and those who will join me later, Lord God. I just thank you so much, God, because I just want to plant a seed. I just want to witness to somebody, Lord. I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody all about somebody who saved my soul. Hallelujah, God. Thank you so much. I love you so much, God. Thank you for everything. Bless my friends, God. Help us to go and just continue the rest of the day with joy and happiness or just conviction, Lord. But you lead the way, God. Change me, Lord. Change me, Lord, to be more like you. That was the song in our ending service today. Change me, Lord, to be more like you. But anyways, God bless you.